Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Saris Daniel. Kindly click on the red button to subscribe. Hit the like button so this video can be recommended to many other people. Like this video, like this video, like this video and uh, click the bell icon to be notified when there is an upload. Welcome to the channel. My name is Saris Daniel. Today we'll be looking at the untold story of uh, Dokas Ayo Babalola, the wife to Apostle Ayo Babalola, the founder of the CAC Church. We'll be looking at her untold story. A lot have been said about this woman. Some said she is a witch. Some said she is the one the devil used to bring down Apostle Ayo Babalola's ministry. Some even said she was the one that was responsible for his death. Some said if not because of her, he would have done mightier works and even lived longer than he lived. Some even said that he married wrongly. He missed it when it comes to marriage. I saw many articles that spoke negatively about this woman and not even one spoke positively, not until I stumble upon uh, on research i stumbled upon one article that talked about her untold side which um, i'm an advocate for hearing both sides of stories and i'm an advocate of not jumping into conclusion i'm an advocate of listening and um, not judging on time until you have um, actually experienced or you have actually been in the shoe of the particular person some of these things we castigate or some of these things we talk about if we we're in the shoe we would have even done worse so no man is in the place to judge uh, but it's not our of place for us to correct each other so we'll be looking at the untold story of Dorcas Ayo Babalola and um, a lot of you who do not know Ayo Babalola he was the founder of CAC and he performed so many signs and wonders he's late now he, he reigned in the 70s in the 40s and I think he reigned in the 40s 50s and he passed on along the line he performed so many signs and wonders he prayed for days without stopping uh, his, he, his his knees marked made holes on on mountains due to his lo lengthy prayers and he he disappeared performed many signs and wonders during his time and god really used him mightily so we are going to be looking at the untold side of the story we have been hearing of his wife a lot of negative uh comments or a lot of negative stories have been said about the wife and i stumbled upon one and uh, i want us to look at the reasons for her frustration there i want us to look at the reasons for her frustration and then we can now uh, judge better or look at it from a better angle all right the untold story uh, true story of Dokas Babalola, the wife of Apostle Joseph Ayo Babalola. Apostle Joseph Ayo Babalola was called into the ministry in 1928 at the age of 24. He encountered the voice of God at EKG Arakeji while working for a road construction company as the driver of the steam roller. Babalola started his ministry that same year and God began to work with him, confirming his word with outstanding miracles, notable signs and wonders. By the year 1930, his fame began to spread abroad, most especially due to his amazing exploits at the great revival that happened at Elisha, which changed the spiritual climate of the western region. It is, not, it is not an overstatement to say that the impact of the Great Revival was felt virtually all over the country. Apostle Joseph Ayo Babalola became a force to be reckoned with in the Nigerian church and became a leader of the Pentecostal movement in Nigeria. His name was virtually on every lips, both of friends and fools, admirers and critics. Babalola, however, remained single and many of his family members, followers and colleagues were becoming curious as to why he was not considering marriage, being a church leader. It then came to pass that after persistent pressure from his fam from his father, Pa David Rotimi Talabi, Apostle Joseph Ayo Babalala got married to Dorcas on April 25th, 1935. At about about 6,000 people attended the wedding, and he received a total gift of three pounds and ten shillings and six pence. The wedding took place at the first Adura Aladura Assembly at Efon Alaye and was conducted by Pastor David Odubanjo, Pastor GSB Odushona, and Pastor Madeyeshe. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing those names well. Apostle Babalola met his wife, a virgin, and had to give her two pounds and ten shillings for the virginity, a custom of the Yoruba people at that time. During their lifetime, Babalola was used to Babalola used to call his wife Pama Abiye, and Dorcas would also call him Baba Abiye. They settled down in Efon Alaye. Much has been said about Dorcas Babalola. Dorcas was born on the March on March 10th, 1912, to the family of Fowowe at Elisha. 
many people regarded Dorcas as being mean and aggressive, but we have to look at the circumstances surrounding her frustration. In the first few years of their marriage, sometimes Dorcas would cook from morning till evening for visitors. For visitors. Later, some people came to give her a helping hand and some would bring food to their home because the house was always filled with people. The no privacy life eventually wore Dockers out. Dockers was extremely stressed, primarily because of the Apostle's busy schedule, otherwise she was humorous. Their sitting room was always besieged and turned to a classroom. There were 47 children and the Apostle was either sponsoring or tutoring and who were always coming in and out of the house. Apostle Babalola hardly slept on his venue bed. He vacated it to sleep on a camp bed and sometimes on the floor. All this compounded Docker's frustrations. What also added to her frustration was that many times her husband would go on lengthy missions and would not return home for over a week. Docker's was not able to go with him for two main reasons. She could not have withstood the harsh condition of ministry work. Babalola did not get a car until 1953. He was either trekking several miles or riding on a bicycle or using a public transportation. A public transportation that was always overloaded with other missionaries and all were men. When Apostle Babalola traveled alone to rejoin other missionaries, he did so most of the time after midnight and before dawn. People were always in the house even when Babalola was away. At some point, Dorcas would try to prevent Babalola from stepping out of the house because she felt he needed some rest. Also, she sometimes took her frustration out on the sponsored children when her husband was away for on missions. The children might be subjected to compulsory fasting. It was extremely difficult for both couples balancing family life with the work of God because of the conditions of mission field then. Evidently, Apostle Babalala gave priority to the call of God and building the church. There was no time for vacationing. The church even planned to organize a trip to Israel for him, but it never materialized. Fortunately, people are reaping of his labor till today. In spite of the slight hiccup in their marriage, there was no case of domestic violence between them. They were both responsible in the discharge of their duties. Babalala always told people he loved his wife, he always respected her, and never maligned her. After Apostle Babalala slept in the Lord in 1959, Dorcas stayed at Afon Alaye till 1962 when she finally relocated to Elisha with her daughters. At Elisha, Dorcas traded in raw food products, especially beans. She remained a member of the Christ Apostolic Church. She remained a member of the Christ Apostolic Church (CAC). She was appointed as the patroness of CAC of the patroness, sorry, of CAC Okesha Elisha. Dorcas died at Elisha on December 20. 28, 1993, and was laid to rest on January 15, 1994, behind CAC Okesha. Eminent clergymen graced the burial ceremony. Pastor Olu Alokan led the wake-keeping ceremony, and Pastor D.O. Babajide led the prayers, while Pastor E.H.L. Olusheye, who worked closely with the family, preached at the burial service. Pastor Olusheye prayed uh, praised Dockers for her monthly for her motherly care, strength, and courage. Most people, out of ignorance or misinformation, have labeled this woman a witch and a thorn in Babalola's flesh. Hence, the necessity of this research, so as for people to be able to understand what she went through as the young wife of a man who was a public property. All right, this is all I was able to gather for the untold story of Dockers Ayo Babalola. So, judging from what we have seen of what we have heard, rather. We can tell that this woman really passed through a lot, which many of us, if you go through this, you will even do worse than she had done. Though we all say she's, yes, she's, she's supposed to have been ready. She's marrying the minister and all that. You know, as at that time, the ministers of today know how to manage career, know how to manage family and ministry. But the ministers of that time were all sold out to ministry work. And that, that really will lead to so many frustrations in the home. And if, um, if one is not really careful or if one doesn't know how to really control himself, the person will be overstretched and cross his boundaries. So ladies and gentlemen, like this video, click on the subscribe button to be notified when there is an upload. Like this video, like this video. Bye for now. I'll see you all later in the next one.